Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 83. Uh, in the show tonight, it's myself, Tim Hawk. Johan Els. Jan Vermeulen. James Etherington Smith. Luckily, you said that, but not me. <laughs> me too. <laughs> um, and the mixer. Yes, nobody ever introduces the mixer because the mixer doesn't speak. I think if the mixer ever spoke, it might rupture our eardrums. True, and then we'd we'll be able to do a show. Yes. Well, we would. And we just speak really existence existence loud. Would, would stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, into the... Events. What events are happening? Oh, don't I have know. no idea. We have no events. Into the show. <laughs> He's giving events. Uh, Mobile World Congress is on. I think that's a start. Uh, are we going to go into okay. our in-depth coverage of it? <laughs> yes, a very in-depth coverage very, of mobile. Very. Don't go anywhere. So, since we think it hasn't been covered enough, so we'd start to yeah. really go in depth. I, I think the 900 stories on The Verge, I don't think it really does MWC justice. I just want to know. So, except for Ubuntu on a mobile... What else happened? <laughs> that didn't happen at Mobile World Congress. That happened so before that. It was so before failed. that. Yes. yes. So, <laughs> there is I the, mean, w- the one topic we're going to talk about. A bit oh, is it coming up? Yes. yes. Uh, we can talk about it now quickly. 41 mm-hmm. megapixel camera. Well, let's run through all of them. Uh, we'll talk about that one specifically, but I don't want to, I just want to mention. Okay, so Nokia has announced the Lumia 900, HSPA yeah. Plus version. They only used to have an LTE version. They announced a Lumia okay, 610. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait. So it's the same phone with a different radio. Yes. Okay, let's Lumia go on. 16, cheap Windows phone. Microsoft dropped the minimum specs okay. of Windows Phone 7. Quick question. Anything really exciting? Thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, even Samsung, Galaxy Tab 2. It can now make calls. And a note. <laughs> it's the same thing. And it's an, yeah. and, and the new no, Note 10.1. It's got a SIM card in it, but apparently you can't actually use it to make calls. Jan told me otherwise. Did you lie to me, Jan? <laughs> no, but now the it, question I've got. The I original Galaxy Tab did it. The honeycomb can't make calls. The honey, honeycomb, Android honeycomb okay. doesn't have a dialer in it, right? All right. So some guys did hack it, but I mean, standard honeycomb. So the new uh, Galaxy Tab 2 or with, 10. ICS. 1, with ICS, ICS now has a dialer. Okay. So if I load ICS on this Galaxy Tab, can I make calls? As Probably long as it's yes. got a dialer app. I mean, the only, the only reason you wouldn't be able to is because of the lack of dialer app. Anyway, we're spending way too much time on this already. Let's go to <laughs> what you want to talk about, which is the 41 40 megapixel camera. Okay, so that, they call this the Nokia PureView, 808 yes. PureView. So this is a mobile phone with a 41 megapixel camera. And according to Nokia, you can take a photo and then use that photo to make a billboard if you want to. That's the, how good the quality the, of this the, camera is. What's very misleading about this thing is it's not intended to take 41 megapixel cameras. Just a question. No, it's, it's got anybody. 41 megapixels so that it can, so that it can extrapolate or yes. interpolate, sorry, yes. between the pixels and make a crisper image. A very, very good okay. 4 megapixel. And this is a quarter inch lens. Am I right? Um, well, that's that's an eight inch lens. Oh, eight inch lens. Are you talking about the CCD or I'm talking the about lens. the lens on this camera? Is like that's a quarter inch. It's it looks like a Macandrick lens. Yeah. No, so let's go one. for forty one megapixels out of this big of a hole. Okay. Yeah, but with the Carl Zeiss optics, they managed to do quite some magic with even that. Little You're gonna bit have of a to hole. do. A, I mean, uh, no. There's there's I mean. When you start, I mean, your your more expensive cameras is because the opening is so much bigger. True in part, but also now with a lot of the cameras and um, the, the phone cameras you're talking about, a lot of the way they let them down is the quality of the, the, the CCD. Of the sensor itself, yes. yes. How quickly it can actually get the process, the image, and get it out. And also how good it is at how much light range and stuff it can pick up. So sensitivity. Um, yes. Sensitivity. Better known as… So as now with this one, you can actually use a cheaper CMOS, you know… You can use the lower quality one, but because you're taking it across five pixels to make one pixel, it's a one of those pixels dies, it doesn't matter, um, and you're in, in, interpolating. Interpolate, yes. You should actually get a far more accurate color profile and light, far more light to actually render that picture from. I want to make a statement, idea. and I hate, I, you know, you guys <laughs> know I hate Apple. You want to say this phone is going to take better pictures than the iPhone? Yes. The Nokia N8 took better pictures than the iPhone, and I know there's about a bunch of Apple fans out there that are going to disagree with me, but that's the bottom line. It just had the better camera. But okay. everything else about it was worse. <laughs> Having said this, big, big, big fail. It only runs in Symbian. Yep. Oh, so, da-da. But, I mean, we were discussing this earlier as to why, and you had a theory. Well, look, they talk about it. It's been in development apparently for four years. Four years ago... They weren't part of Windows Mobile. There was only Symbian. So a lot of the, the stuff in the low-level code that they wrote to work with this camera was done. At, you know, it was one of the skunk work projects in the middle that they hid away, mm. and it's come out now. Now, it's just going to take them a while to recode that for Windows Phone because imagine, I imagine that there's a lot of processing and stuff to get I suspect there. that they might not even be able to without Microsoft's help. 
because I'm fairly sure Microsoft does not have low-level access to the, mic to the Windows Phone 7 code. However, they do have low-level access to the Symbian code. So, I, and if I were to wager, if I were to put money on anything, I would say that that's probably the reason they keep these platforms around. If they want to do something really exciting and they are limited by Windows Phone, then they've always got Mego or, um, or Symbian to, to test it on. Having said that, you must still be able to get data off the chip and, and do some things with it. Yes. So before we move along rapidly, because <laughs> we're now actually giving a lot of airtime to this event. Yes. <laughs> As a parent, the most important thing of a, of, a, of a camera on a phone is it needs to activate very quickly and take a picture very quickly. Yes. So when you guys eventually at my broadband get your hands onto this thing, those are the things you're going to test. Yes, sir. Because, you know, when your <laughs> child is smothered Doing something in cute. Exactly. Yeah. I don't care about 41 megapixels. I just want to mm. get the damn photo. Yes. And that is a failing on most smartphones yes. is it takes yes. really long for the camera app to start up. Well, or it, it starts up quickly, but then it takes forever to focus. Yeah, sure. It goes backwards and forwards and, and then eventually takes a photo. So, yeah. like, but right, that's right. it. Even professional cameras can take long to boot up. I found this with DSLRs. You switch it on. Ah, just buy the right phone. Uh, just buy the right camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> off that into Sorry. more normal talk. Uh, 10 megabits per second TV white space trial. Yep. I must say, when I first read this, it was like 10 megabits per second TV. <laughs> <laughs> and there was actually, it's more using the TV white space, um, the space, TV white spaces in s between the TV signals. Okay. Yes. Do you know what that is actually? It's your snow picture. Mm -hmm. You know when you're tuning on your old bunny ears? The snow, that's a white space. Yes. So why didn't they decide to just call it snow? It's probably, uh, okay. But I mean, it's an it's, it's a equal amount of white and black pixels, which causes a noise. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's actually just the way it comes out. I mean, in, in effect, what happens in, in the frequency domain is it's nothing like that. So, I mean, it's just there's, the there's, tune is well, just there's noise. Just white there's noise. noise. Yes. which has a lot, a lot of frequencies in it. Just to, to get uh, slightly less detail what we're talking about, uh, the, t <laughs> the TV channels broadcast on different frequencies. frequencies. Yes. Okay. Now, in the old days when the first came out, the width of those and the noise and overlap that it had was, was quite bad. So they would space the TV frequencies very widely apart. The TV channels, channels. would be widely apart, yeah. yes. Mm. Also, in analog world... Um, if, you've, if you're sending the same channel to two areas close by, you actually have to send it on two frequencies. So you'll end up that SABC1, as a bad example, is running like mm. on 16 ch different frequencies for outside Africa. Mm. Yeah. Which means you end up with, in an area, they can't use those frequencies because SABC is using that frequency for the same channel in a different area. Mm. And that's the white space. Yeah. And there's an in-depth discussion to be had here because I read a fairly interesting article um, on you know, the, the licensing of Spectrum, because we are licensing Spectrum monopolistically. So you give it to one guy to use for one purpose, and he doesn't use that Spectrum everywhere, uh, as is evidenced by, by television and stuff. So these guys, they were arguing for the opposite radical, which is just, just leave it all open. Let people you, use you, it as you, they want. You mean like uh, Wi-Fi works? Like Wi-Fi works, mm -hmm. exactly. Which actually does work quite and well. And it does work. Uh, but so it's an I, interesting I, argument, and I, I but I'd love to say some experts. Sometimes you also actually need clear signals. Uh, a good example of this was your 3G stuff, where they're talking about in America with light squared, where they're going to start influencing all of a sudden all your 3G and all your old equipment stops working. Yeah. Um, now, I have a question. Is this not the same TV broadcast frequencies that uh, everyone's fighting over for digital <laughs> No, uh, no that's, digital the, that's, a, that's a digital uh, dividend. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's as we move to, okay, so in But between, this happens in the same kinds of bands, though. Yes, okay. Uh, let, let's give a discussion what, what ha what's happening here. Um, basically, with TV white space, what they're planning on doing is doing a data space of, in this area, they, we're not using these frequencies. So you can now use these frequencies for data or, or something else like that. Um, as we move towards the digital systems, they're going to use even lower frequencies. And those 16 channels, they, they might only use four channels or something like that. So they're actually going to be freeing up frequency bands. And on the digital one, you can use the same frequency throughout the country. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in other words, and, and I've looked at the 800 megahertz band, they are envisioning chopping up the, the f like front chunk and the back chunk of the 800 megahertz band, leaving a little tiny chunk in the middle um, where TV is going to fit. So if you've got all this, all this hap uh, stuff happening with TV white spaces in between, 
And that's going to have to stop okay. um, when we switch to when now, quick, in 800 megahertz. Quick, quick answer. Why is everybody fighting about this frequency band? Um, because lower frequency uh, broadcasts propagate better. Propagate better. So, and... Uh, more I think distance, you get more penetration. Yeah, and, and th I think the, the Steve Song previously explained it as really the thing is more penetration. So it's not necessarily that Sorry. it goes further, but it doesn't attenuate as much when it hits well, stuff. A, a good example, so I don't know if anybody has tried to use Wi-Fi over a great distance when yes. it's just rained. Yes. You can't. Um, and that's why so the lower the frequency, the deeper it actually goes or will go goes into things. And, and if you've walls, heard any of Celsius advertising around the 900 megahertz network, you would have heard the deeper, stronger argument. Um, you can ignore all that and just keep deeper because um, <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> uh, but look, it's interesting. I'm glad they're doing this. Um, and the, the reason why is that, that digital dividend is going to take years. And we can maybe start utilizing it and start doing something now with it. Yes. Um, and it's very good. I know in England they're very sort of implementing it um, and it's paying off. Yeah. Now, what's interesting is I had the honor of sitting in on a webcast, a Qualcomm webcast for um, members of the press and, and analysts and stuff. And they actually argue against using TV white spaces. So there's, there's interesting debates around, they say instead of, you know, focusing or, or, or spreading your energy on these many different ways of using the spectrum, focus on releasing the digital dividend. But the reality of the situation is that regulators are useless and they don't release the spectrum as fast as they need to. Um, and before people say I'm anti-ICASA, there have been more than enough articles on CNET and Ars Technica this week talking about uh, how much they hate the FCC over stateside um, for, for the slowness with which, which it is moving in licensing new spectrum. So this is a global problem. It just takes long to license spectrum. True. And look, there's a lot of very big players in there and they all want it. So it's, when you have lots of money and it's worth a lot of money, it's sometimes a bit better to take a time, but longer. But at the same time, yeah. No, you look, need to get hold it done. on, we've got a deadline, eh? 2020. You mean like- For broadband, for all. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Broad, 4MEX, broadband, for everybody. <coughs> Sorry, yeah, how was how how was the deadline last year for... No, I'm just um, saying, don't worry. We'll get this sorted out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it sorted out. 2020, we'll, everybody will have at least five megs. No, no, no. Um, I spoke, remember, I spoke to the DOC. The new minister said, no, 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 they're not going to revise the definition of broadband. It's 256 kbps. So don't worry. By 2020, <laughs> everybody will have 256 kilobits. Kilobit per second. Kilobits uh, per uh, second. Uh, smoking. <laughs> Mm. Absolutely. <laughs> fast. Absolutely. Wait, wait, wait. You're saying all of us will have that. Yes. All, all of, of us will not have more than that. <laughs> all of it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway. Let's no, well, that's it. obviously not what's meant, but yeah, yeah tongue in cheek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please don't quote me. <laughs> we are joking with that. Um, <laughs> uh, quantum qubits. Yeah. So this is an epically geeky show. So this is going to be awesome. So quantum computing has been something that they've been working on for quite some time. Yes. Now what's... Um, perhaps interesting about this, uh, this particular article is it, it focuses on one breakthrough made by IBM where uh, the, the bottom line is, is that they will soon be able to chain five or ten qubits together and actually perform elementary operations. Okay. Very cool. What is a qubit? A qubit is like a bit, you know, a zero or a one, yeah. except it's a zero and a one at the same time. It can m maintain both states at the same time. I thought it was a measurement Wait. of a stack of wood. <laughs> That's a cube. Yes, in the Bible. No, no, it's a cube. Yeah, you know what? No, it's a cubit like that. Yeah. Yes. It can be a zero and a one at the same time. Yes. Yes. And don't try to, don't ask me to explain it right now. Um, look, I'm I must tired. say, I don't fully understand it, but <laughs> as, as you get larger and larger numbers, what's really cool and where the big problem with this is, you've got your key now. Now it's very hard to factorize your keys or to. to so, keys. so what, Jay, what, what um, Tim is talking about there is encryption. And that's what people are, are envisioning. And I think that's actually really boring. That's a point I wanted to touch on. Um, that the, what this technology is being envisioned for across the board is encryption, to make encryption stronger. Mm -hmm. Proceed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> as I was about to take a drink. Um, <laughs> now, with this thing, is, as you feed the keys, normally when you've got to like, uh, brute force a key, yeah. You're going to go through so many iterations to get through this. With this one, you pretty much can go through all the iterations in one step because it exists in all those states. You pretty much test all those states in one go and get the answer out. I'm lost. Keep on. Let's go on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it's – but now what, what bothers me is that all people are focusing on for quantum computing is like, oh, it's users in encryption. And I'm going – 
this is this is kind of how every technology develops. You you've got this initial sort of excitement behind it, and you know whatever it might be, touch screens or the microcontroller or anything like that. And people are like, oh, you know, this will have amazing applications in this field. And then some um, smart entrepreneur comes and just blows blows all that out the water and makes a billion bucks on doing something completely different. So I'm really hoping the same well, kind of thing for quantum computing. Yes, <laughs> you hack all the banks. <laughs> <laughs> Simple. <laughs> I guess that's one way to make a billion. Cool. Anyway. Um, WUGs. WUGs are great. Okay. Yes. What, what is a WUG? <laughs> Wireless user groups. Um, pretty much it's communities have gotten together to start creating free and open wireless networks spanning large metropolitan areas. So it's uh, a man. Hmm? It's a man. Yes. Sorry, a what? A metropolitan no. area, area network. network. <laughs> Thank you. A man. <laughs> Not a woe man. Yes, but anyway. it's a wireless man. <laughs> yes. So maybe it is a woe man. <laughs> anyway, keep going. Anyway, um, basically, okay, the one yeah. we, we know quite well is PTA work, mm -hmm. uh, but I know there's also J work, there's CT, which is Cape Town work. There's a Garden Rude work. Okay. Cool. There's actually a Garden Rude work. Sweet. And I'll look out for it next why, time. Why it's quite there. cool to get involved with these is normally this you, you, you pay your, your initial cost would be your equipment to connect. To, I know for the Pretoria work, there's about 2,000 Rand. And that's an antenna and a router. Router and board. And that's pretty much, and a pole. And, and is there like an LMB or something? It's part of the antenna. Okay. Part of the antenna. It's built. The antenna you buy, you buy has everything involved. It's got a uh, feed. It's you then feed. point that at the work. You've got to make sure you've got a line of sight to the work and you can see the work. You point that at the work and then you on. After that, essentially it's free. So you, you, the, the speeds range depending on how close you are from, let's say, one meg up to, I have had 15 megabits per second um, that you can get down for downloads. And that's, but that's most importantly, it's bi directional. It's not just. Four meg down, two five six k up, which also means you can start building services on that. It starts mm, mm. allowing you to access to a lot of the, the internet and the speeds that people overseas are getting, um, and it's quite nice. Especially if you if you enter and you want to learn more about net networking, there is opportunity to get involved, go out, help mm. the guys. And, and as and a learn learning a experience, um, and you'll not get anything you, better than this. It's the I quickest think, for way. Free. To pick up TCP/IP networking, and never mind TCP/IP firewalling, putting up a, a, like learning what it takes. I mean, people are very quick to criticize cellular networks, so go put up your own mast, go hang your own antenna, and wait feel what it feels like. Wait for the first lightning storm, <laughs> and then you realize what it's all about. Yes, um, but it's cool. But it's just they've been growing quite nicely. Um, I, know, I don't know the stats for the other bugs, unfortunately. From yours, and I saw there's now 125 high sites inside Pretoria. 122. Ah, 22. Okay. Yes, we I think we're at the point where we need to get hold of Bash Tux and tell him to really now approach Guinness Book of Records and find out because I'm very sure Pretoria Walk's got to be there. Yeah. Well, if they've broken 2,000 2, users. Nice. That's huge. Nodes. No. Nodes. Uh, nodes. So, so there can be multiple uh, more, users. No, 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 way more users I, I know of a certain node nodes. which has at least eight users. Exactly. Cool. I mean, um, node is just when the, the equipment that you buy, it's where it terminates. So from there, there's guys that actually just run an Ethernet cable across to his neighbor, all within legal limits, okay? So, but that sort of stuff. So there's mm -hmm. actually more than one person hanging. Mm. And there's a lot of wives that's involved and kids, I mean, that's also involved. So You're praying for the dads not to fall off the roof. Anyway, keep going. Um, it's 2, 000, over 2,000 nodes. Okay. So users, I don't know, Who you knows? can only speculate. Um, and look, there's a lot of other things going on there. I know there used to be. Look, I've, I haven't been involved because I've been uh, mo <laughs> because you moved to Joburg, and I haven't had time to put up my, my kit yet. I have it; it's sitting there. I just don't have time. Um, but there were Windows updates, Ubuntu updates you could get from it. Uh, gaming was very big mm. on it. Yes. Um, all the usual. There was things. a guy that was testing for his work. Now you can only guess. I don't know who. He, I actually don't know who he was, but he was testing a new poker online poker web-based poker system. Oh, okay, that he cool. actually developed for his company. Hmm. So I don't know which I don't know which company. It doesn't matter. But I mean, he was testing an online game, uh, web-based poker system on the work. Cool. Where else can you actually get access to possibly two thousand people that can test your development for you without being malicious about it? Because you know these people. You can go to a work meet and meet them. So and all your bandwidth is free. Exactly. 
Um, and with that, I think we need to start looking at the competition, which we didn't announce at the start of the show. Yes. We're sorry yeah. for everybody who's listening in or in IRC who's, who might not have been able to enter the competition. But that's what Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus and... And the My Broadband about. Forums uh, was for. So what, what we have some entries, and I'm going to read through them. But, what was but, the competition? Okay, so the, com- the competition was, you have to come up with the most interesting February 29th factoid, and uh, you will win a cell C. You could C- win. Yeah, it, well, if you have the most interesting one, you will win. Okay. Uh, judged by the judges, um, and perhaps the mixer, who, who might wave violently at one that the mixer thinks is uh, a good. And you could win a Cell C <laughs> SIM. And uh, the next part of this... Oh, by the way, the Cell C SIM and has 20 gigs of data left on it. Um, it's two gigs, uh, two gigs a month, month. And it expires at the, at end, the end of, of the year. Yeah. Yeah, so and the grand prize? <laughs> and the grand prize, and this I'm going to bow out of. Tim, over to you. Uh, this is from The Mixer. Since they love it so much, they decided to donate one or two to people. And, but we, we decided whoever's got the worst... One. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> where, where a Norton antivirus. 2000, oh, it's 2012. I mean, that prize is worth a solid 700 bucks. Hey, and it's bucks for three PCs. For uh, three PCs. Nice. My goodness, nice. Eh? But personally, I would still rather not use it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Works with notebooks. Look, look, look. <laughs> what else does it do? inside. Let's, let's have a wait, look. Wait, wait, wait. Do we have two to give away? We have two. Well done. Yeah, well, that's for another giveaway. Wait, wait, let's just, let's just see what, the, what does Norton do for us. Um, stop <laughs> online dangers without sacrificing performance. <laughs> yeah. Email, chat, surf, and socialize on the web without worrying about cyber criminals ripping you off. Okay, don't worry. Constant worry. All right, goes. so here, 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 <laughs> are, here are some of the ones that we've received so far, and, uh, and then we'll make an adjudication call um, by the end of the show. So <clears throat> I'm not going to read out the names. I'm just going to read out the factoids. Okay, so a year is not exactly 365 and a quarter days long. So adding an extra day every four years actually results in an extra day over a period of roughly 100 years. Thus, another rule was created so that if a leap year falls on a year which is divisible by 100, that year is not a leap year. For example, the year 2000 was a leap, was divisible by 100. It is a leap year, but it didn't have 29 days in it. It did. In February. Keep on reading. Okay. <laughs> while, this, uh, while this rule brought us closer to an accurate calendar, it would still be out by a day over a 400-year period. So yet another rule was created whereby if the year is divisible by 400, it would in fact be a leap year. For example, the year 2000, which what is divisible by 100 and 400, and so it is in fact a leap year. So, and with all these rules, we're only off by one day in 8,000 years. Yeah, nice. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. So uh, two people submitted that today, if you work for a fixed wage, a salary, um, you essentially work for free compared to other years. So sorry, for, sorry for you. Let me say that. This, <laughs> this, uh, my argument with that is this is actually a shorter month. Well, February is always a shorter month. And, and what the mixer says is, come on, haven't you been working your extra quarter day every year? <laughs> <laughs> I've been working far more than my extra quarter day True. every year, but... <laughs> yes, which, which is not entirely accurate But moving right along This one was also interesting The odds of giving birth to a baby on February 29th are very low 1 in 1,461 Having twins that day is in the range of 1 in 65,000 And then um, This was on Huffington Post apparently Stuart Hochwert, a publishing executive Said the problems go beyond mere mathematics What is this? I don't even. Um, I tried to rent a car from a national car rental firm a few weeks ago. He told HuffPost Weird News by email. The system would not take the birthday, February 29th. I told the agent I use February 28th, and it was accepted. She did not ask any questions, did not seem phased, and I was off and driving quickly. This happens on occasion. Some reps via phone, etc. So in other words, there are computer systems out there that simply do not accept February 29th as a valid date. You laugh. I had somebody trying to do something today or book something for today. And I wouldn't accept it. So I actually had to book. I can't remember. They, did, they booked it the day late or the day before to take it today. <laughs> yep. Um, so uh, another cool thing about February 29th is it was the day that Raspberry Pi was launched. <laughs> Someone submitted. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> didn't, didn't they, release, they should have released it on Pi Day. Yeah, that would have been nice. What is Pi Day? Then Three, the 14th, 14th of, of March. 3.14. 
All right. Uh, so in America, though. So. So here, here's an here's an interesting one. According to English Nine, law, 14, well, it's third three one four. Month then day. Americans write it that way, right? Yes. yes. Well, worry. there's no other way to do Pi Day, really, mm. unless you go. The third of the fourteenth month. <laughs> in any case, or the thirty-first of the fourth month, which doesn't exist. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> yes. Um, so, according to English law, February 29th was ignored and had no legal status. So, a crime on the day is no crime at all. Nice. That must have been like chaos. That's <laughs> Does that still hold true today? I, I, I wonder. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I seriously wonder. doubt if, it. If the author will tell us in the IRC, because uh, he slash she is in Dang. there, <laughs> um, then uh, that would be cool, and we'll, we'll f- yeah, give some feedback on that. Then, the last one. Um, I know, sorry, second for, from last. Sorry, guys, if this is really boring you, um, stick around. It's about to get very interesting. Only century years divisible by 400 or leap years. Okay, we've actually covered that one. It's similar to the, yep. to the previous one. Uh, yeah, then, slow down. Uh, no. Slow down. <laughs> According to the Gregorian calendar, February is the second month of the year and also the shortest month. February has 28 days until Julius Caesar gave it 29 and 30 days every four years. According to tradition, Augustus, the Roman emperor, took one day off to add one day to August, the month named after him. We now have February with 28 days and 29 on leap years. Cool. Uh, by the way, from the RSC, hmm. uh, it has been repealed. Okay. I would have re- repealed that as well. Ooh, we have somebody who slid in with a factoid at 7.57. Close enough. Just in time, just in time. Hugh Hefner opened his first Playboy Club on February 29, 1960. <laughs> come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> nice one. Okay, no, that, come on. <laughs> That's got to take my vote. <laughs> All right, so we will vote on what this after vote, the show. going for the, your free day to do whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, whatever you want. How awesome is that? Oh, um, the Hugh Hefner one. Which ties in quite nicely with the Hugh Hefner one. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean free day? This is the London one. The London, England, English England law. We, we, yeah, but it's been repealed. <laughs> well, eventually, eventually all bad laws are repealed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But we'll, we'll vote on it a bit later. Anyway. Cool. All right. Thank we'll, you for your submissions, guys. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll let we'll, you know shortly. We'll vote in a second. We'll, we'll, we'll obviously also take comment from the ROC, so if they start saying. Yeah, but they're going to vote for their own stuff. <laughs> we, we'll take comment. We'll take <laughs> not the decision. Yes, we'll consider comment. <laughs> anyway, um, Linux computer the size of flash drive now available for order. This is not the Raspberry Pi. I know. Okay. <laughs> I'm asking. It was a question, not a statement. Oh, <laughs> I thought you put this in the show notes. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. Uh, any. The, the, this looks like a mixer paste because it's got the whole blurb in the All show right. notes. Apparently, you can buy a something called the EF. FXI, it's FXI, sort of yeah. USB sized. Uh, you power it via the USB drive. Those uh, in the video will be able to see the dual photo core now. 1.2 gigahertz ARM Cortex A9 CPU. Okay, well, cool. so you're going to plug this PC into a PC to, to power it? That is the PC. Uh, you, you can plug it into a hub. Uh, a powered hub, yeah, okay, sorry. Or, you know, just some form of power supply. And then you can just replug your keyboard and mouse into that as well. So it's got a, it's got a, sla- a host and a slave connector. Yeah. Flipping awesome. And it's, H, uh, it's HDMI on the other side, so you can plug that into your normal screen. Okay. Now, what, what, what I'm saying is this is very close to today's what they're trying to do with the Raspberry Pi. Like so that one, on they, a, that one I think they're trying to make phone. even <laughs> cheaper. Ubuntu on a cell phone, sorry. Just got to you should have been here last week when we discussed Ubuntu on Android. Yes. <laughs> yes. So you this were, apparently runs were, Ubuntu or Android, which I'd expect from a, a PC. It should be able to run whatever. You were you were um, doing your show last week in a hell of a lightning storm. So sorry that I unplugged. <laughs> no, it's fine. You should be. It's not allowed. <laughs> yes. Considering how far away you are from us, if, exactly. if we get hit by lightning, we want you to be hit as well. So um, it's a one just two gigahertz ARM processor. So mm. it's an Intel processor. ARM, ARM. not Intel. Oh, sorry, ARM. Sorry, it's, it's sorry. Pretty much what is in your phones. Yeah. Uh, some of the other things also is built in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, radios for connectivity and input. This, is, this looks like the same kind of hardware that you will find in the Samsung Galaxy S2, in fact. ARM Cortex-A9 processor, Mali 400 MP GPU. Um, so it's fairly hardcore. It's amazing. Um, and $200. Is... Okay. No $25 Raspberry Pi, but not bad. Yeah, it's a bit higher. Look, it's a computer that fits on a flash drive. Well, they say we use this actually quite often would be pretty cool, sort of like uh, sensor nodes as well. Okay. Then, then again, I would still roll the Raspberry Pi. Okay, hold on. But this thing has got no storage. 
Um, not in the spec sheet that we've got on hand. It's no, got one gig of RAM. No, but it will have storage on board. I mean, you have to boot from something. Oh, okay. We don't, where am I missing that? Is, it, is the note just a little bit short? Okay, okay, no, okay. Then it makes it, look, yeah. this type of thing would be awesome if you want to look at something like um, Google TV. Oh, okay. So you can actually take your, maybe take your, your LCD you've got at home already. This is Google TV. Plug it in, switch it on, no, off you go. Where they say is you take this is you go to a school that has TVs. Yeah. And there's your PC. But you see, the problem is the powering of this thing. It's all going to well, but you can, my guy, you're going to still it, add It will hub. use very, very low power. It, it will use less power, much than your phone will. Okay. Because isn't there this power on HDMI, isn't there? There is some of them. Um, you can, I mean, yeah. Anyway, so okay, it all anyway, depends right, on right, how the it works. Yes. Look, this it's is interesting. Where we're going, yeah. Raspberry Pi. All right. Raspberry Pi have also announced that they have distributors. I uh, saw so in America and somewhere else. Yep. Obviously not here yet. The Raspberry Pi is also more geared to for schools and stuff like that. It's supposed to be under $25, I think. Um, and the idea with this also, uh, USB, uh, it can take audio, video, and a LAN card. But it's more for hacking. So it's it's to give to schools and stuff like that very cheaply. Um, so the kids can actually start to learn how to work with PCs and how they built and write programs for them and... It's, it's geared more for that. I know there are also daughter boards you can add on this that add controllers uh, for, and for motors and sensors. So you can also then use it for automation. Mm -hmm. Cool. We are running a bit short on time and we haven't covered any gaming topics yet. So perhaps we should move these other ones to the bottom uh, and quickly run through them at the end. Yes. Is what I'm guessing. Well, not no, quickly. Well, start with a date. I'm gonna, we, we'll finish with this one. Okay. okay. Go with games. Yes. Go. James. Uh, Hello, James. Hi, James. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, no, first of all, who are you? Where are uh, you from? James, editor of mygaming.co.za, sister site to mybroadband.co.za, sitting next to me over here. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm a, I'm a wage slave at my broadband. Mm, where, so. where can people find that? Uh, so. Mygaming.co.za. That is where you'll find us. Uh, you can follow me on uh, at James underscore E underscore S on Twitter if you want to, you know, shout things at me during the day. <laughs> or you laughing? can follow... The My Gaming. Yeah, Twitter at My account. Gaming, uh, whatever. <laughs> Just come to the forum instead. That's where we really want you to uh, be. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, Twitter's far, boring. Far more interactive. Mm, far it's more. great to be able to type more than 140 characters. What toy did you bring earlier tonight? Uh, okay, well, I, I brought with me the PS Vita. Uh, maybe I should turn this guy on. That would help. Anyway, there it is. If oh, that's got a touch screen. It. So you actually uh, now touch drag. Touch screen, of course. So, yeah, that, no, there's the time if you wanted to know. And then you can uh, peel... Away that, cool. and we're loading up all the games, and uh, quite a snazzy menu system. Up and down goes through your various options, left and right uh, would go through your open applications, had I had any some open. open. Uh, what game do I have here? Uh, this one. Okay, but it shows you the icons for every game you've had in your device, not necessarily. Yes, yes. so uh, if I click something there. that's not in there, it'll probably tell me to please it, put in. It uh, does, in fact, do that. I've tried that, and it's very irritating because it takes quite a while. So you push it, and then the error message comes up, and then you just have to dismiss it. And Are you anyway. sure you want to launch that game? <laughs> yeah. You want to go start again? And then, of course, on the rear, you have the touchpad for use in games that have rear touchpad. And these two black... Is, is that this is just something for holding. to hold on to. Oh, just is it capacitive or resistive touch? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Okay, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Making <laughs> me look the, the, stupid. The, are we going <laughs> <laughs> to ask about the big fail, though? Uh, yeah, so there's a few, there's a few no, there's fails. It's a very good device all around, but um, it, it's an expensive device, which is the big problem, really. So what's it cost entry. here? Uh, 3,000 Rand roughly for the Wi-Fi, depending on Wi-Fi only, depending on where you shop, and a further 3,600 for the 3G, depending on where you shop. Uh, everyone's, uh, Don't so worry. Everyone's uh, concerned about the fact that uh, you need a memory card. It doesn't come bundled with the thing, so you yes. need to buy a memory card. Uh, Sorry, many games will store... Just had a request. Oh, uh, yeah? Am I, am I cool. not being... Yeah, there we go. So no, 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 no,
store saves on the little game card that comes with it. Which uh, and many others. Sony is not proprietary again. Hey? Uh, well, this, I mean, obviously is fairly proprietary, and so is the memory card that you have to stick in the damn thing. So, uh, depending on the game, um, the developer, in fact, will decide whether or not the game is going to get stored on the disc, uh, the cartridge, rather, or the memory card. Uh, big games like Uncharted, Golden Abyss, uh, probably don't even have enough space to save games on the cartridge, so you're going to have to have a memory card to play that. That's a further 200 bucks at least for the 4 gig and more depending. And you get the device without a memory card? Uh, yeah, no memory card when you buy it. No headphones, so uh, you know, a lot of people have headphones lying around but it would be nice. I mean, these for, oh, for 3,000 Rand plus, you'd expect maybe some standard headphones at least and maybe a free memory card. But hasn't headphones become like sunglasses? You actually... Uh, yeah, everyone has a pair. But I not, do. No, no, no. Everybody's got his own choice. Uh, well, that's true, yeah. So when you start bundling headphones, you're probably going to end up at half of the guys just going to chuck it away yeah, and buy his own put it in set the, in any case. the spares drawer or what have you. So Yeah, so uh, the other thing is um, Sony's uh, little trick was to try and stop you from selling your cartridges secondhand by tying the cartridge to your PSN account. So uh, the secondhand buyer wouldn't be able to earn PSN trophies. Uh, but somebody's already figured out a workaround. You can go read about how to do that on my gaming if you feel so inclined. Um, we reviewed the device, or Quinton, in fact, reviewed the device. He gave it a solid 72 out of 100. Uh, it got good marks all around. The thing that let it down was the price at the end of the day. Yeah, but now, when the device is like three grand, I mean, at least the games are probably a, l a little bit cheaper. Uh, yeah. About 400 Rand at least. Sorry, uh, 400 yeah, Rand. Good, Seriously. 4 double zero for the, 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 the lesser of titles. And the higher lesser. titles? Uh, I think Golden Abyss, uh, Uncharted, Golden Abyss, so big name, IP that was about 600 Rand at launch. Uh, obviously, they'll come down, you know, if you're the kind of gamer who That's my fault. waits, who's intelligent enough to wait for the prices to come down, you'll, you'll spend less. But hope it, it's hope it ends not up on an the inexpensive toy. Yeah. Mm. Um, now, I wanted yeah, to ask the three grand, does that buy you a 3G version or a Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi wi and the th 3.6 for the plus 3G version. Wow. Uh, you'll and have to reek your SIM card, by the way, once you've uh, yeah, that's, and, bought that. And, and, and uh, if you buy uh, a one that can take a SIM card, can you make calls on it? Absolutely not. That would be great, but no. Look, well done. Yeah. <laughs> I did hear somebody mention there's probably a good opportunity for one of the networks to start selling these as a contract. Except that you can't make calls on it, and that's where they make their money. You're still yes. going to run through your data like crazy. Yeah, but that's not where they make money. Um, because, I mean, that's having, how I got Having this said device. that, going forward, that is call making money on calls is going to go away. Yes, so they've got to work around that, but they don't want to right now. So <laughs> there is talk that they're going to sell that. Sure, sure. Uh, Bunding it on a contract is, would be a brilliant idea because that will make it more affordable for a parent. But I mean, at five hundred rand a game, mm. forget about it. Mm. Yeah, mm. that's like a killer. I'm sorry. Um, about a, a six, and then you can't six hour battery life max. So it's not a bad portable gaming device. Uh, yeah, it, like it a cell phone wouldn't doing. last you that long. You know, it comes with uh, various accessories: battery, a uh, car charger. So you know, if you're on a long road trip, you want to keep the kids quiet. You can keep it charged or what, or what have you. But uh, long haul flight. Mm, it's probably going to die halfway through, uh, stuff like that. So it's to take in consideration there. The other thing is... Replaceable battery? Uh, no, no, of course not. I mean, you know, could you open that thing up without yeah. breaking it? I well, know. I can tell you why that's happened, because how did you hack the previous The previous version? one, yes. You, you tampered with the battery. So, yes, they won't make it open anymore. Yeah, the Only other if thing, they've done the same mistake with the battery, which is that the battery can speak directly into the system without authentication or all the rest of it. Yes, yes. The other thing you'd probably ask yourself is, do you want to spend the same amount of money on a portable gaming device when you could get a PS3? Are you the type of gamer who likes to sit on the couch and relax? Or are you the kind of antsy gamer who just can't get enough well, and needs to have a gaming well, having device? Having said that, now that we have a, the car train in, in this country, mm. we, we have public transport. Those things and start it's delayed looking quite a lot, lot, lot more viable. Mm -hmm. um, I always thought, you know, in this country, a lot of these things aren't as viable because we don't have public transport. But as we as it's growing and we slowly starting to get it, that is a you know how much free time do you guys have? But on a train or whatever, you, you have free time. Yeah, yeah, indeed. But I mean, the free time you have on a train, you can whittle away on a smartphone. You don't need a massive uh, look, I, yeah, gaming honest, console I for that. Get one of these. It's too much mm. for the amount of money I'd rather get. Mm. But you know what's going to be awesome now? You get a PlayStation now. Three, which can play Blu-rays. You know what's going to be awesome now? The PSP is going to be so much more affordable. And the games are going to drop through the carpet. So now, yeah, start on a PSP. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that device. Uh, right. Speaking of the PSP, um, 
the launch lineup for the PS Vita does look strong, uh, I must say. So there's some fairly cool titles, big name franchises, Assassin's Creed, Uncharted's obviously already there. There's stuff coming. Uh, Escape Plan was a cool puzzle game. Love to see like uh, another version of Loco Roco on the thing. So you know, it it might do better than the PSP did. In fact, it's already it's selling okay at the moment. The PSV. Too. They're going to have to converge. Where they're going to have mm-hmm. to make this device. And if you've got, like you said, if you already spend the money on the PS3, mm-hmm. they make it must make it attractive for you to actually then okay, let's buy this device so I can extend my game from my PS3, and then sort mm-hmm. out the game pricing because who the okay sorry there is probably people out there but. How, who's going to spend 600 bucks on a portable version of mm-hmm. Uncharted and the PS3 version? Well, I can, or, I mean, I can already see the tie-ins, uh, if the guys are clever, you know, play the PS Vita version of uh, some Uncharted game and unlock something special in the next Uncharted game. Uh, what's cool about this, guys, you can use them as a extra remote for your PS3. Um, oh, okay. So, so there's it, some it, development we've yet in to that. see, you know, something that makes use of that. But uh, you know, perhaps because it is a full touch, of course, so they could. So do there's something also cool. Bluetooth in there. Cool. Uh, yes, wireless. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bluetooth, one last so comment Bluetooth. I want to make no, before d- we d- move on. Is it Bluetooth? It uses uh, wireless technology. What? It's some Bluetooth. I would it's assume Bluetooth Wi-Fi. because Wi-Fi. if it's going to connect with your. Uh, uh, chat it's a good question. I actually don't know, but well, uh, it's on the same frequency, but I don't, I need I'm to not bring sure up my PS what, te- yeah, what technology that is. It uses the 2.4 frequency, but it's not Wireless a Bluetooth system. Okay. It's using. The question yeah. is: the remotes for a PS3 is it Bluetooth or is it yep. Wi-Fi? Bluetooth. Yeah, uh, ad hoc mode. Be, Bluetooth 2.1. Then okay. that will be Bluetooth to the PS3. Sorry, I, mm-hmm. I misunderstood. Mm. All right, so uh, one last question from the IRC, which yes. I thought was, or a point from the IRC that was interesting, was that the PSP Vita shows what a ripple f- smartphones are, or phones are, when you consider that for, for 3.6, you mm. get a GSM version. Yeah. Um, and whereas a, a, a ah, smartphone costs you six grand. My counter to that was perhaps, I mean, this is something that obviously needs deep investigation for you to find out exactly how much that costs them to make. But... Um, a, they might be willing to take a knock on the sales of PSPs and subsidize that with, with game the sales. Grand, with the 500, 600 grand premium games. Um, I, I'm not sure though, because Sony does make money on console sales. They don't sell their stuff at a loss usually. So, no, they, said they did. I mean, for a while there. That thing was no, that's losing true. money. Um, Look, it's, a, it's an interesting point. I don't know. Have, this isn't a fairly impressive piece of kit. I mean, you know, once you take away all the other arguments. I mean, it's got a touchpad on the back. It's got a touchscreen on the front. Uh, it's got a myriad a 720p buttons. resolution screen, something around that Having range. Having said uh, that making things smaller makes them more expensive. And this is quite bulky. Yeah. Cameras, of course, front and rear. Yeah. Tell mm. me, um, last question. Um, mm. uh, the, uh, any outputs on display? Is there uh, a th- good question. Uh, I'm looking at my little spec sheet here. <laughs> I because don't PSP know. There is a... Uh, PSP has got an optional cable that I actually bought because it makes it... At that stage, it was easier to watch movies at the hotels just off the PSP. Mm. Just plug it into the screen. Mm. Mm. I'm sure so there is something like that. We, we've only okay. had this. I mean, this has only come out this week and we're still playing around with ours. So we still got to go through most of the, the functions with it. You know, living with the thing as if you own it rather than rushing through it. Well, uh, enjoy it. Yeah. Well, we will. Uh, we're getting all the cool games. So, yeah. Will PS Vita have TV out for connect to external display? Yeah, no, PS Vita will not have video out. Mm. Fail. That fail. is a bit of a fail. Mm. We did, look in, oh, we did look into that. Quinton reviewed the device and uh, I said to him, yeah, why don't you plug it into your TV? Can't do it. So, yeah. mm. Anyway, I'm going to move us on along a bit. Some yes. Some of the other That news. was interesting. Thank uh, you very much. Very cool. The most pirated games in SA. What were they? Uh, yeah. Uh, whoops. Let me just bring up the list here. Uh, interestingly enough, ironically, perhaps Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is not only the most pirated for January, but of all time amongst South African pirates. Sorry, is that a new release of... No, no, San Andreas is quite old. The old one, yeah. yeah. Very, yeah. I can't remember. And to, to, to preface that, that a little... Coffee one? So why would it now be... Uh, yes, it was that whole Sorry? conspiracy. There was a hot, hot coffee, coffee mod where you could, uh, you know, don't, do don't naughty worry. things. Go, go, go naughty Google things. Hot coffee. No, I'm just... I'm asking. So <laughs> why would it now suddenly in this month just been spiked up again? Uh, it's a good question. There's some cool mods for San Andreas. Uh, okay. So that might be part the of it. Mods uh, driving yeah. it along. So people are now... So the developers of that just open source it. Yeah. <laughs> Take the credit. Uh, you're running through cool the game. list, uh, you know, from uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas was one. So then we have uh, Grand Theft Auto 4, Age of Empires 3, uh, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Seeing a trend here, all the classics. Uh, I've, no, I've seen something I'm going to ask you about. Mm-hmm. Kind of strike condition you. zero. Yeah, sure, go for it. Diablo 
three beta keys up for grabs. Oh, Where, yes, of course. How? Uh, well, uh, Megarom, the local distributor for uh, Blizzard and Activision products, is running a giveaway competition uh, through various partners, My Gaming being one of them. So you just head on over to our site. Uh, the link should probably be in the show notes or something like that. Cool. And yep. there's an inline entry form. Just put in your name and mail address and... Um, and how you get picked? You may be lucky enough to be picked. There's uh, 350 left, and the competition's running for the next uh, three weeks, I think. Every Friday, the winners are announced, or contacted, rather. Cool. We don't announce names, of course. If we script um, a PHP script just to keep on submitting... <laughs> they we'll, they picked we'll, that up because we'll, we'll, we've already we'll had a discussion about it. Uh, some no, 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 uh, no, some no, guys tried that there's and There's a simpler way. Work, we submit so. once or twice, and then we put another script... Offline, so it's not associated names. I've got cause, to cause server to, ca- uh, to uh, crash, okay. <laughs> and then, then you know it's not our one. If you're that desperate, go ahead. I mean, <laughs> no, never, never, <laughs> never ever. Do maybe you just call Vagram and go. I'm really, really desperate for a key. Why don't you just, give me one? <laughs> just quickly, just quickly on on this whole thing about Diablo three. I see how Blizzard is getting very worried about um, um, uh, old, uh, Star Wars: Old Republic. Really? Mm. In what sense? Do you yes. reckon? They will, okay. they will uh, apparently, if you now buy Diablo 3, you'll get like a year's worth of gaming. No, sorry. If you buy a wow year's stuff, yes. yeah, if you buy a oh. year's worth of subscription on WoW, you get Diablo 3 for free. Yes, yes, yes. That's been mm. like that for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah they've yeah. had that promotion for a while. No. Uh, I suppose, uh, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. You know, keep them <laughs> locked in, you know. Keep them in the Blizzard mm. universe. That's what the whole Battle.net social network's for and yeah, all that absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. Okay, I missed the first round of announcements. Um, no worries. Okay, I'm just going to be this team. Pinball Inventor. Yeah, we can quickly run uh, through the maybe the local announcements here. Uh, team SA, Battlefield 3, uh, was participating in the Nations Cup, Battlefield 3 tournament. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, the guys uh, lost their first two matches, but they absolutely trounced Australia. Yay! <laughs> well done. Uh, gave them a solid thrashing. I don't think Australia even got on the board. So yes. well go, go and, the second, and, and the second three. time around they thrashed them again and they also didn't yes, get yes, on the board. Yes, they, yes, it's a best of three sort of thing. Yeah, so yeah. The, uh, they beat them in two rounds, didn't even get on the board. So well done Team SA for that one. Unfortunately, uh, their, their chance to go through the next round, hopes were dashed when uh, the Russian team they were meant to face forfeited. Uh, unexplained forfeiture, which meant Team SA won by default, but we really need to give them a solid thrashing to get the extra points required to go through. Oh, and okay. uh, that just didn't happen. So, unfortunately, the guys were knocked out. But, Who won um, the tournament? Uh, it's still ongoing. So, uh, oh. it's the next round. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, the guys will be representing South Africa until the next round of uh, picks You know, for those SA representatives. So, that'll be sometime later in this yeah, year. Qualifiers or whatever they call them. Uh, MMS. Uh, yeah, the Mind Sports South Africa, they're the official government sanctioned or what have you um, guys that are in charge of esports. They're having the Gauteng Land, Champi- uh, Land Championship uh, coming up soon. Registrations are now open for all of those who want to get involved for the various games Warcraft 3, Counter Strike, uh, stuff like that. Uh, all the details are there in the My Gaming article. Uh, Registration is only open until the 10th, so you better get in quickly. Uh, and finally, uh, StarCraft 2 NAG Gaming League has opened. Uh, st- uh, That's interesting. New Age Gaming. Everyone knows NAG. Uh, they've started their uh, own StarCraft 2 Gaming League now, so go and register. I think you've got until the end of March, 22nd of March, something like that, to get yourself registered for that. Is, some cool can, you, can you, can you um, register as a solo player, as a team? Uh, yeah, I guess, I mean, being StarCraft, it'll probably be like uh, mostly, m- solo. mostly solo. I don't think there's a team-based version. Okay. Uh, I'm not That's interesting really because, sure I mean, there. StarCraft does come with, you know, two, sure. two, yeah, two, uh, two but three, I mean, four, four. The, the main competition style yeah. is one-on-one. So. Yeah. All right. Something a bit more interesting, PC Gaming Wiki, what's this? Yeah, I think that was just something cool that uh, happened this week. Uh, we picked up on... Basically, the guys uh, running the PC gaming, PC gaming Wiki 2.0 want to uh, collect all the tips and tricks and tweaks and bug fixes and workarounds and all that kind of stuff that PC gamers have to deal with to get their games working optimally on whatever system. So yes. you, you, know, you might have a problem running XYZ game on Windows XP. Here's a all list the of hidden fixes. features as well. There's yeah, yeah, stuff like that. So it's supposed to be the one-stop website for finding out what you want to know about awesome. whatever game you're trying to tweak. So I'm sure there'll be a Battlefield 3 page for getting it running on uh, various systems, uh, you know, stuff like that. So I think that's a really cool initiative. It's cool, still, well done, yeah. you know, building up at this well, stage. It takes tiny while, but once the momentum gets there... Yes, exactly. And being a wiki, people can contribute. So it's pretty cool. 
And then sad news. Uh, yeah, slightly, uh, you know, for those, who, I mean, I never knew the guy, but uh, it is sad to think he was, you know, a cornerstone of gaming as we know it. Pinball inventor Steve Kordek has passed away uh, sometime last week, uh, aged 100, so he put in a good high score. Yeah, it's a and, good high score. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, I mean, this guy, I think he, he was responsible for making, you know, hundreds of different designs of pinball machines. Um, he even invented some sort of uh, electronics that helped the bumpers shoot the ball back up to the top of the table. And, you know, he was really the, the forefather of pinball. And uh, I mean, pinball, as I say, cornerstone of uh, gaming as we know it. So, you know, rest well, in peace, yo, Steve Cordell. Thanks for everything. Yes. All right. I'm, I'm going to skip our law. The, the I don't know, but it's it's just quick. Um, For those who missed it, today, the 29th, um, the Pirate Bay uh, announced some time ago that today was the day that it was getting rid of Torrance. And so it has replaced its logo and everything with the logo of a magnet, said the Magnet Bay. Um, And the reason for that is that they replaced um, the majority of the Torrent links on the site with magnet links and removed the Torrent files. For an in-depth discussion on what exactly magnets and Torrents are, You'd have to go and look at that up for yourself. Just go read the Wikipedia article on BitTorrent. It's a very complicated technology. Um, so, but suffice it to say that basically, instead of downloading the file directly from Pirate Bay, the torrent file only, um, you now download the torrent file from other peers. So, so they now clean. Um, well, I don't think it was a. They don't say it was a legal issue in their in their blog post. They say it was a waste of bandwidth, and um, yeah, yeah, and right. it was a censorship issue. Some governments were actually blocking torrents, and so now they can't, okay. is, but un- unless they block the contents inside Some a web page. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it was a censorship issue rather than a legal issue because I don't think, and if a if if a, if a court. Uh, you know, uh, finds that uh, places like the Pirate Bay are guilty of copyright infringement for hosting torrent files and for hosting a tracker, then switching the torrent file for a magnet link won't do anything, I think. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway, um, I think we're just going to vote on the competition quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're supposed to do in the dock. Unfortunately, I don't think half of us have the docs. So no, you, you do. I've shared it with you. Well, uh, I vote. We just vote. <laughs> oh, in open. Yes. Okay, okay. So we'll run through them again. No, that's fine. Okay, and um, the, no, we can all remember. Do, are, are we going to vote and then do the kicker? Yeah. Okay, so we'll do it in the open. Um, so I vote for the law one. The English law one. Yeah. Okay. Or the absence the, of law. The mixer has voted for the for the English law one. What What was the first one? Because I like that one. How did it go? Oh, the three hundred sixty five days, four hundred. Yes. Yes. Exactly. I like that one. Okay. Yeah. All right. I learned something there. All so right. So the, this cool. is this has received one vote. Good. Don't, Jan, what do you vote for? You vote. I vote for the po- penthouse one. <laughs> <laughs> Playboy. Yeah. Playboy, sorry. Playboy, wrong one. Playboy. S- so we matter. One, one vote for One, two. one, two. What I do you vote three. for? I, this uh, is going to be a problem. No, it isn't. If I vote for something else, then... Um... Look, the, the mixer carries the vote. <laughs> so <laughs> if there's a tie, the mixer... <laughs> we vote the vote. Okay, that's fair enough. So in other words, um, that means that... Um, uh, the the English law one uh, wins. What's your vote? Um, okay, I'll tell you now. Hang on a second. Um, I like pressure. Shh, shh. Not I'm thinking. Here, don't worry. I'm, I just like have to go through up. them all again. Why, why don't you show us a game while he thinks about it? I'm trying. I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> while he's busy, busy uh, deciding, I'm no, going to start going. As as trivia goes. Uh, that's how I'm going to adjudicate it. As trivia goes, I found the English law one most interesting. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to vote for that one. Okay. So who, who won? Who's the winner? The, the winner is uh, my BB forum, Nick, Mickey D. Uh, I'm not going to say real names out loud. No, because no, it's what's yep. well, the whole point D, of it? I know you're uh, the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're sweating under these lights, biometrics. Okay, let's go into kickers. Cool. It's cool well done, Mickey mm. D. That was a very interesting submission. And well done to everybody else for, for um, submitting. That I think they were all fantastic and interesting. So, uh, 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 Mickey we'll D, we will email you on just how to get it to you. Uh, yes, we have, we have everybody's email addresses and cool. stuff. So, that's cool. All right. Laser app tag for iPhone, iPod, Yes. So this kicker is very interesting. It's a Kickstarter project, and I see uh-huh. myself kicker plus Kickstart. Yes. Uh, I see myself hanging out on Kickstart and giving startups money, 
just giving them my money. I can like make myself bankrupt on Kickstart because there's so much awesome stuff happening on What there. is it? It is a laser gun, yes. and, and, or not a real laser gun, um, and you attach your smartphone to the back of it, and then you walk around with it like laser tag. I don't, uh, what do we call it here? Laser Quest in South Africa. Yes, you remember that. Um, and so you can walk around and shoot other people in the game. Um, so it's like an alternate reality game oh, wait. with an actual gun. Sorry, finish and then we've got I'm to do done. something. Yes, uh, okay. We've we, got to do something. What do we forget to do? The, the Curse of Norton. The Curse of Norton. All do right. Know, do you know who I think <laughs> we should give this to? Who should that we go? We had a duplicate. We had two duplicates. Yeah, there's two so prizes. There's two prizes. <laughs> 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 no, but that's not fair. Which one of the duplicates get it? Both. Does anyone, somebody copied from does somebody. Does anyone... <laughs> actually want Norton so, <laughs> like, so, no, no, you know I, what I, I mean yeah, like, exactly. so if somebody's like I actually, I want I actually Norton, liked then. all the oh there's two sets of duplicates yes so that's four people so in other words what I'm going to do is anybody in the IRC who wants Norton shout me now while we discuss yeah. the rest of the kicker the problem is I liked all the results they were I liked all of them exactly so what I was going to say for a tiebreaker <laughs> <laughs> so the IRC explodes. <laughs> not me, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Any case, yeah, right? Well, we'll oh, oh, wait, oh! Wait, there's a me. There is Biometrics. a me. Biometrics. Biometrics is the winner for coming in first. And hello, Kitty. And hello, Kitty. Cool. Well, okay, sorted. Fine. Do we have the details? Uh, they, can, they can PMS now. Private cool. message. Okay, cool. So we do, we do have... I, I want to get to my kicker, man. Keep on yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, Finish yeah. your laser. <laughs> so, so we will now. All right. So we have everybody's email addresses, so we can just contact them because yeah. they're all submitted entries. Yes. Thank you very much, everyone. All right. So laser tag, you run around with a laser gun, and these guys say they can have thousands of simultaneous people connected via Wi-Fi, I think, um, and you can have a city-wide laser quest game, real-life first-person shooter. As the first city reality, that rolls out yes. a wireless network... That lets me do this. I am moving there. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you in the city to roll out a wireless network? Well, I, we can do it ourselves with the WUG, I guess. But oh, just a couple. It's a couple of APs. Do you know what distance, so if you're in the outside, you can actually cover with these damn <laughs> APs? <laughs> cool. So, so Run around this work? complex. I mean, you pretty uh, much how do you shoot on. the other guy? Um, so there's an actual gun. I don't, I don't know how the technology mm. works per se. There, there's a inaudible sound that it releases. Uh, it, don't worry, it's not bad for animals or anything like that. And the different guns pick up that sound. Okay. And then wow. they use that for targeting and stuff like Sounds that. Sounds so cool. Mm. And, and like on the back, on your smartphone, you use it as a display. Mm. I see one problem with this, by the way. So it, it's yeah. alternate reality. So in other words, you've got a little crosshair overlaid, and, but the, you see through the camera of, your, of yeah. your smartphone. So the real person is standing in front, and you line them up in the crosshair, and then you pew, pew. <laughs> the problem is I see smartphones flying yeah. all oh. over the place. <laughs> that, that, as long as they game. make the attachment into the gun tight. Well, look at that thing. It, it looked fairly dodgy. To me, uh, do we have the picture up? Yeah, um, but you, you can still do it as long as the yeah, I don't know. The, the mind yeah, yeah, fix I it a bit. I would design. want one left and right as well. Yeah, and added to that, I would want like with the um, Wii games that strap, yes, like a strap somehow. Because you know, mm. next you don't want to drop the gun. Mm. Yes, yes. Especially if you're running through a city and you knock someone with your shoulder, then stuff yeah, goes flying. Yeah, when you're flying. getting really serious about it, you're like hunting the guy through buildings and stuff. Exactly, dude. You're doing parkour <laughs> on yeah, top yeah. of like three-story buildings. Running around with a Sounds Nokia like 41 yeah. megapixel camera. Will that give me an <laughs> yes. advantage? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I bet no, you this will run Symbian. Symbian. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, comments from the IRC as well. Uh, that iPhone glass. The iPhone mm. just has to look at the ground and it's shattered. <laughs> so, yeah. See, by yeah. any case. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, we, Johans. Yeah, yeah this was just, for so long. This was so funny. Um, we had a support call in the week at the, at the office where a guy was having problems logging into his email, and he sent us the link. Um, if you want to have a good laugh, just go to uh, ymail.com, which is Yahoo's login page for their mail, and you can log in with your Google account. So is that... <laughs> I'm being serious. <laughs> so Yahoo's just given up. Is that it? <laughs> you can have a Yahoo email, no, no, email no, no, address. Listen, listen to this. You can log in to Yahoo... With. Email account yeah. with your Google one. Yeah. So it's open yeah. ID. Yeah. <laughs> so you always just given up. They're like, whatever, no more services, this is just we're dying. No, no, no. You d they don't give you a Gmail account. They give you a Yahoo Mail account, but they, you don't have you to have an account. Yeah, you just log in with your... But you, you use your Gmail. You don't have to get a Yahoo login. Yeah. Having Brilliant. Said, I still use their note system that works so well. What note you, system? They had a note system that used to integrate with uh, Outlook very well. So, you know, remember Outlook had notes and stuff like that. So, it would incorporate your notes uh. into the system. So, I have a whole bunch of notes in there. <laughs> but it's just, it's, it works. You go notes.yahoo.com and it works. 
Dark Star Demon. So I just thought this was so true. Hilarious. I just this haven't major. migrated yeah, everything yeah, across yeah. here. <laughs> But yeah, okay, sorry. I just, when this opened up, I just started laughing. And, and <laughs> Herod just asked, what now? And I said to him, try this link. And he also just, <laughs> well done, Yahoo. All right. Cool. 10 out of 10. Supporting w- open w- technologies. With that, I'd like to thank uh, James for joining us. Thank you. Cool. Ooh. Where can people find you again? Uh, on the My Gaming forums. You'll find me there every day. Or if you want to follow on Twitter, just uh, hit at, at My Gaming. That's probably the best place. We'll answer all your questions that you have about games. Um, I'm glad you edited about games. You, you do have a Facebook page as well. We do. Uh, you that can, does get monitored. It does get monitored. We update it daily with all sorts of cool stories. So uh, You can I'm just search sure for my gaming. Is, yeah, yeah. Just search for my there, gaming. There are multiple there, yeah. my gaming pages. You'll see the one that looks most official. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Jan, I am the staff writer at My Broadband. You can direct any ire at staffwriter at mybroadband.co.za. <laughs> um, I'm also on Twitter, Jan VZA. And um, yeah, but you can check us out on my broadband. If you've got any queries such as what is the best ADSL service out there and who should I go to for 3G data, ask in the forums. Jan. Block.who-else.co.za. Cool. Myself, Tim Hawk. You can uh, at Tim underscore Hawk uh, and pretty much on Let's Talk Network. Um, and thank you, Mixer. Thank you, Mixer. And thanks everyone in the IRC. Thank you, thanks, you guys were great. Yeah, it was great to have you all on thanks IRC. And thanks to the three, can we call it three winners? Winners, they, everyone won. <laughs> <laughs> Norton's great. <laughs> um, with that, uh, please go like uh, either our Facebook page or Twitter or we'll go check one of our old shows. Mm. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Done. <laughs>